Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game Elden Ring Night Rain running on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you've got an M1, M2, M3 or M4 chip Mac, then this should work pretty well for you. Just make sure that you have probably more than 8 gigabytes of RAM. You probably need 16 gigabytes of RAM to make this work locally on Apple Silicon Mac hardware. But we can actually do this. We're actually going to be running the Windows version of the game locally using a translation software called Crossover. So in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to get all of this working. So one of the big caveats with this is the fact that we have easy anti-cheat enabled. So that means by default, the best way to get this to run is going to be single player offline only. But in this video today, I'm also going to show you an unofficial multiplayer mod that's very popular, which allows you to actually invite people through Steam. And this is going to work through the Windows version of the game as well. So I'll be dropping instructions on how to get that done. So this tutorial video is going to be a start to finish guide on playing Elden Ring on a Mac getting this game running as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware. So first thing to do is to click on the link at the top of the video description. Every purchase made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, you'll be taken to the store page here with the discount automatically applied. You can actually do a free trial if you wanted to, but if you did want to purchase this, I do recommend buying Crossover Plus. This isn't actually a subscription service. It's actually going to give you a permanent license for Crossover 25 if you buy it right now and any version of Crossover released in the next 12 months. But what you can do as well is click the Try Now button and make use of a completely free 14-day free trial. So just go ahead and enter your name and email address and then click to download the trial now. So here it's saying Crossover is now downloading and it's going to go into our Downloads folder. So then we're going to go ahead to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder and then we'll find the Crossover zip file, which we'll double click on. And then once that's extracted, we're going to drag and drop this into our Applications folder. And then within Applications, we're going to scroll down until we find Crossover and then we'll double click on the application here. So just double click on that. And it's saying here, Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Let's open it up now. So now Crossover has opened up and we're now free to go ahead and download a multitude of Windows games and applications. What we're going to do now is to download Steam. So we're going to click the install button here, do a search for the word Steam and then click on this Steam icon here. And then we're going to go ahead and install it. And it's going to go ahead and create what's called the Steam bottle. And then it's going to put all of our Windows Steam files in one place. So if it asks to install fonts, just press yes and then just continue and allow this to complete. You can see it's running some stuff in the background and it's automatically agreeing to all of the windows there. Here we're going to agree to the terms and conditions, press install, and we're going to install Visual C++ here as well, close. And then the Windows version of Steam is now loading up. So just press next here, next, and we're going to install Steam in the local directory and then click finish, and then it's going to run Steam. So here we can see that the Windows version of Steam is now updating. And now the Windows version of Steam's login window pops up and we can log in with our Steam account. I'm going to be logging in using my phone app and I can go ahead and scan the QR code on screen and then I'm going to log into my existing Steam account. And now our Windows Steam library is loading up here and we can basically download and install a bunch of Windows games. Many of them will actually work through Crossover 25. So one tip as well is that if you want to run any advanced DirectX 11 or 12 games, then we want to change this graphic settings from Auto into D3D Metal. That's going to select this manually. And I'm going to change the synchronization from default to msync. And that's going to get the best performance out of the majority of Windows games. So then we're going to do a search for Elden Ring Night Rain. And then we're going to go ahead and download the game. So just download this into the C drive in the bottle and then let that finish. So let that complete. It might take a bit of time until we move on to the next step. OK, so we've got uh, Night Rain installed. So I'm going to press the play button and it should give us the error message from before. So here it's installing easy anti-cheat services, which is definitely going to fail. It'll install, but it won't let us run. So I'll just wait for DirectX and then we're doing. And here it's going to ask us about controller support. So make sure you have a Bluetooth controller attached to macOS. Just go ahead and press. So it's going to give us this fail to load anti-cheat module. And to fix this, we need to disable easy anti-cheat and launch this game in offline mode. So to do that, we just need to swap over a few files. We right click, manage, Browse local files. Then here we're just going to double click on the game subfolder. Double click. And then we've got these two games. So change the file there. So right click, rename. We'll just make a backup of this file. So I'm just going to add a dot back to the end of it. And then we need to rename the original exe file. And then we're going to rename this file to start protected game.exe. Protected game.exe. 
So just rename that exe file. And then when we launch the game, it's gonna launch the non-anti-cheat version of that game. So just press launch. And then once you've waited for a few moments, then the main menu will launch and we can basically play Elden Ring Night Rain. However, the main thing is that this game will only launch in offline single player mode. However, nonetheless, this actually manages to run really well. This is running at 1440p maximum graphics settings. So it's actually running very fast, hitting nearly 60 FPS consistently at 1440p maximum graphics settings. Just bear in mind that this is actually running on a very fast computer. So this is the M3 Max with 48 gigabytes of RAM and 40 GPU cores. So there is an unofficial multiplayer mode called Seamless Co-op, which is a mod that existed in the original Elden Ring. And this is actually gonna allow you to play multiplayer using Steam invites. And uh, I didn't actually get a chance to test this because I don't know anyone else playing this game. But what I'm gonna do is to leave a link in the description for the Reddit thread and the Nexus Mods link. All you've really gotta do is to drop the files into your game folder using the same method as we did before to swap the exe files for the easy anti-cheat disabling. And then you need to do game invitations outside of the game because the overlay for Steam doesn't work on D3D Metal. So just command tab and go back into the Steam Windows interface and do all your invitations there, and then it should work. So anyway, that is my look at Elden Ring running on the Apple Silicon Mac. Um, let me know in the comments whether you managed to get seamless co-op mod working and how you found the experience running this on a Mac. As far as I can tell, it seems to run even better than the base Elden Ring game. So that's quite a surprise. It's quite exciting to see that all working very well. Anyway, I hope you found this little tutorial video useful. I've got lots of other video tutorials on how to get other Windows titles running on the Mac. So make sure to check all of those out. I've got lots of them on my second channel, which is this one here. Plenty of other really excellent titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 are now playable on the Mac. And even though this is a relatively new title in terms of AAA gaming and actually runs really well even on lower end Macs. And also lots of recent titles, for example, Split Fiction, the cooperative Windows game, manages to perform really well. We even have support for DualSense controllers and corresponding LED color lights. And there are plenty of other high end titles that work really well. For example, The Last of Us, both part one and part two, now work on the Mac through Crossover 25, and also titles like Uncharted. So next we have a bunch of new releases. So we have games like Avowed working. So this is the new Obsidian RPG, which is a first person kind of successor to something like Skyrim or the Outer Wilds, but in a fantasy magic world. And this is pretty much working out of the box, running at 1080p on medium settings. And another recently released game is Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. This is made by Don't Nod Entertainment, and it's kind of a successor to Life is Strange. So unfortunately, earlier titles in the series did have Mac ports, but this is Windows only, but seems to work pretty well through crossover. And another recently released title, Ninja Gaiden 2, Black, which is the latest Team Ninja release on Windows PC, is managing to run here at 1080p high quality at nearly 60 FPS. So anyway, if you want to find out any more about crossover games running on your Mac and other tutorials, then make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to these in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.